Now, when you see those similar kind of cells, but as in nodules or islands in the dermis, or even sometimes the subcutis, then you can think of hydradenoma. And there's another entity that some people believe in and others don't called dermal duct tumor, which is probably closely related and on the spectrum between poroma and hydradenoma. And the thing about hydradenomas is they tend to have more abundant pink cytoplasm, a lot of times have cytoplasmic clearing, and they tend to have very large cystically dilated spaces filled with sweat secretion. Here's an example too, the stroma around a variety of sweat gland and duct tumors, particularly in hydradenomas, tends to get very hyalinized and sclerotic. That's a common finding. Here's an example of that clear cell change from abundant glycogenation. And in rare cases, you can see almost complete 100% clear cell change in hydradenomas. And those uh, cases can very closely mimic metastatic renal cell carcinoma, which is a carcinoma that has a tendency to metastasize the skin. And particularly, I feel like I've seen it often on the skin of the head and neck. So a relevant entity for everyone here to know about. So make sure to distinguish those. An easy way to tell them apart is hydradenomas, like many other, probably most other skin and nexal tumors, tend to have strong diffuse nuclear expression of P63 and P40. So those are closely related markers and you can use them. They're a really helpful marker for a variety of sweat gland um, tumors and other adnexal tumors. Um, in fact, most epithelial tumors from the skin that arise from the skin, squamous cell carcinoma, basal cell, seborrheic keratosis, and, all, and the vast majority of adnexal tumors, both benign and malignant, will have nuclear expression of P63 and P40. And that marker is usually going to be negative in renal cell carcinoma. And there are other markers too, like Pax8 and and, and on and on, but I really find P63 and P40 to be quite useful. Um, in this case, I think morphologically, this looks great for a hydradenoma, no problem, but I have seen a few that had extensive clear cell change. Here's another example, and I think cytologically, look, the cells almost look squamoid to me. They look very much like the cells that you would see in, you know, maybe in a separate keratosis or some other entity that they look like keratinocytes. Um, and here's sweat ducts, little tiny ones, bigger ones, and then more dilated ones. And this one here is lined by its own layer of cuboidal cells. Now, this is a spiradenoma, which despite the name is totally unrelated to, uh, to hydradenoma. So I think the names of sweat gland tumors uh, add a lot of confusion. But these are blue basaloid looking islands or blue balls in the dermis, blue nodules in the dermis or subcutis. And they're usually very sharply circumscribed. Sometimes they can get abundant, clear edema uh, of these pale areas of edema in the background that make them look really weird. But this is the classic appearance up here. They look very different than hydradenomas because they're very blue, whereas hydradenoma and other members of that family are very pink usually. So here the blue um, cells are packed together tightly in the middle of these blue nodules. And the, the sweat ducts are nice and circumscribed and they're lined by a little cuboidal epithelium here. Now, uh, some people like to talk about three different cell types being seen in spiradenoma. These small little round blue cells, the larger, slightly more pink cells, and then scattered lymphocytes. And if you find that useful, great, but I find that for people just starting out, uh, this is a kind of subtlety and nuanced thing that's that's difficult to recognize. And in not all spiradenomas have it perfectly. So you may have heard of this before, and if you find it useful, great. But I find blue nodules and then little sweat ducts like this to be much more helpful than you know the individual cytology. But the scattered lymphocytes is a common and helpful finding. They, it's usually present in spiradenoma. Uh, the other thing in spiradenoma is you do tend to see a lot of basement membrane material both as little tiny droplets or, or spherules in the midst of the tumor islands and also as thick, dense bands surrounding some of the tumor nests. And look here, these are ducts. Now these ducts don't have their own cuboidal lining, but they have a very sharply circumscribed border and this kind of thickened, darker pink um, layer around that border that we call the cuticle. So the presence of a dense pink cuticle, sharp circumscription, and if you're lucky, a little droplet of secretion, sweat secretion in the middle, that's helpful to distinguish a true duct from, you know, an artifactual vacuole. And sometimes that distinction can be challenging. 
Uh, here's another example of really abundant um, hyalinized droplets of basement membrane material, which of course is type 4 collagen, really common to find in spiratinoma and also in the closely related entity, cylindroma. I think of cylindroma and spiradinoma as like brothers, basically, or sisters. They're very closely related, and sometimes they even coexist together in the same tumor. Poroma and hydradinoma can sometimes occur together as a hybrid tumor, and cylindroma and spiradinoma can sometimes occur together where you see both entities together intermingled with each other. And when I see that, I say spiradinoma slash cylindroma hybrid tumor, and with a comment, if it's not a dermatologist, I'll add a comment that this is a benign sweat gland neoplasm. And that, you know, it's just so they're uh, familiar that it's nothing uh, scary, even though it has a weird sounding name. All right. So the difference is that cytologically, cylindroma and spiradinoma to me are essentially identical or very closely, uh, or very similar to each other. The difference is in the way the cells are arranged with one another. In spiradinoma, they're packed really closely into those big blue nodules. But here in cylindroma, they make small nests of varying size and shape. And those nests kind of mold and squish into their neighbors and mold and conform to the shape of their neighbors. See how this, the nests kind of all lock into each other like puzzle pieces. So some people say these are like puzzle pieces. Um, Ed Fulton, my former fellow, liked to say they look like spots on a giraffe. I thought that was pretty clever and I like that. And again, look, we've got really sclerotic hyalinized droplets of basement membrane material here in the islands of the tumor and also surrounding each of the individual nests. So very beautiful cylindroma. These often occur on the scalp and um, sometimes can be associated with syndromes like Brooks-Spiegler syndrome.